first crack cat, and this might be my last since next year is my senior shell. Um, really glad you all could make it. I want to thank you know family and friends for everything. Um, my dad, my mom, my nana. Um, I couldn't have all this food and stuff. My uncle Sandros and Aunt Michelle, they brought the pizza. And I don't know, all the moral support along the way. I really appreciate it. Um, so the title of the show is Simulacrum Simulation. And it essentially kind of came into fruition through a bunch of research and me going through my process of doing some portraiture. Um, so if you didn't read the two definitions, Simulacrum, is an image or representation of someone or something. It tends to be an unsatisfactory um, imitation. It's not a replica. It has like flaws. It's um, I don't know. It's not a, it's not ideal. It's an imitation or a substitute. As for simulation, it's um, an imitation of a situation or a process. So when I started this, I was kind of thinking, what does self-portraiture mean? Is it a reflection of yourself? Is it a reflection of others who influence you? So when I was doing this, I kind of researched it more, and I found that Plato and this philosopher called Jean Fillard kind of philosophize on the simulacrum. And the idea is that you might imitate something, but you can't really capture the essence of that something. So when Plato first kind of theorized this idea of simulacrum, his idea was that there's kind of two simulacrum. Um, there's one that's like almost like a photocopy. So you could picture like maybe an art, uh, literally a photocopy. So like in his mind, it would be like a, um, a faithful reproduction precise to the original. So in Plato's mind, one was an original as the other was kind of like a perversion of the original. So in Plato's mind, you could see that being like Michelangelo's David. So one being an exact replica, the other one being distorted in some way. So if you don't know Michelangelo's David, it was distorted. So when viewers look at it, it looks correct. But the way Michelangelo sculpted it is so the head is bigger. So when you see it from a human scale looking up at it, it appears to be anatomically correct. But in actuality, the head is a lot bigger because it's not to real life scale, it's like almost larger than life. So this has been philosophized for a while and John Boulogard, he's a French um, postmodernist and he kind of broke this down into four parts. Um, and postmodernism has kind of been a response to the meta narrative, essentially being a response to anything non-white male. Um, and this was kind of like new and up and coming in that time. Um, and so, I don't know, John Boulogard, his kind of philosophy is that there is no culture, that there is no essence of nature, that everything is kind of response or a response to another response, kind of like vibrations or um, vibrations or responses reverberating and just gets louder and louder and louder. So in his mind, there's not really a set culture. There's just like this expanse that just keeps happening. So he developed that into the four types of simulacrum. And essentially, he broke that down by saying the first simulacrum is a basic reflection. And he deals a lot with semiotics, semiotics being the meaning of signs and signifiers and kind of what relates that meaning to that. And so when he breaks down to the first part, uh, into four parts, the first part is a basic reflection where the sign can be a reflection of a profound reality. And so, going back to the definition, this isn't a reflection of reality, but it's kind of distortion of reality. Um, there is really no real reality or no real truth because everything is constantly changing. It's not in one stable state. And that could be seen through like prior Greek philosophers. And so, I would kind of loosely base my paintings off of that. Um, so this is kind of on like that first meditation of thought as where the second one is kind of based off of the perversion of reality where the sign is an unfaithful copy. Um, it can hint at an absence or an existence of an obscure reality, but it's in itself, it's incapable of representing that reality. And as where the third one 
is a pretending of reality. He calls it a pretendence. Um, and this is not a faithful copy. This has no original. And this sign claims images to represent something real, but no representation is taking place. Um, it's arbitrary images, and they're merely suggested things which have no relationship to the reality. Um, and he called this like the order of sorcery. He uses this phrase because it's a regime of somatic algebra when all human meaning is conjured artificially to appear as a reference to the hermetic truth. And so he's kind of playing off of this idea that we might kind of conceive a truth or an ideal or a representation, but that can't be like represented because there is no truth. And the final fourth stage is absolute simulacrum, where it has no representation to the original. And this essentially is where uh, the signs merely reflect other signs, and any claim to reality on the part of images or signs is just like as the other claims. They're just signs responding to signs, and they're kind of creating their own image. So even though I inspired it from other ones, they're kind of vastly different. So this one is like almost complete abstraction. And I really liked his ideas of the simulacrum just because I think he broke it down into four parts very nicely. It was something I could kind of understand and not understand in a very fun and kind of like playful way. Um, and I kind of just want to end his philosophies on repeating a quote that really stuck with me. That the simulacrum is never which is never that which conceals the truth. It is the truth that conceals that there is none. And I think that kind of speaks a lot to my work and to how I just feel about art in general. Often artists want to portray a reality or portray the world, but we always fail. We can't portray the world as it really is because there is no kind of real world. It's grounded in these kind of arbitrary signs and signifiers that we attribute meaning to but those meanings are always being lost or changed over time. So I really like that. That's kind of confusing, and I like confusing things, but it's also very playful, um, and I try and work that in here. So I kind of inspired my title off of his writings. His title for his, um, his book of philosophies or his treaties were Simulacra Simulations, and I kind of took that and perverted it into my own title. And essentially, these four are the simulacrum, and on the back is the simulation. And my idea was to do these in a way to where they're not just four pieces, they're eight, or they're more than eight. And the idea is to have people being able to walk around it, view both the front and back, and you can kind of attribute your own meaning. You can find which one you like, which one you don't like. You can find something appealing about the front or something more appealing about the back. But Overall, this was just like a fun process. I was really into the research and I was really into kind of like the whole working on glass and working with like reclaimed materials. Um, it was pretty intense, but I kind of had a lot of fun in the process. Um, and I guess I'll kind of talk about that process. I used reclaimed window panes and I essentially started this by doing a blind contour drawing on the glass. And for those of you who don't know what a blind contour drawing, it's looking at your reference material, whether it be a picture of someone, a mirror image of yourself, or what have you, and you look at that while you're drawing, but you never look at your paper. And while you're never looking at your paper, you're never looking up the pen or pencil. That way you have like a continuous line. And I started doing that in my figure drawing class as a means of like practice and working with like muscle memory, knowing how to like not only outline people, but their planar structure of their face. Because you don't want to outline someone because that's not going to look like them. And you don't want to draw someone being like, oh, I'm going to draw a nose because a nose isn't really what, if you draw what you think a nose looks like, it's most likely not what a nose really looks like. It's a, it's a rectangle, it's a uh, combination of shapes. So with this work, I really wanted to play with like a different amount of shapes and line quality. So this all started with line quality and progressed with layers to get certain unique shapes and colors. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I kind of want to touch on. Um, I want to give you guys a chance to walk around the work, um, enjoy the work, 
Ideally, I don't have the light on when I want people to view it because when I was doing this in my studio, I had a bit of a softer lighting and with this white wall and this bright light, it kind of blew it out. Um, so that was very unexpected, but um, yeah, so I'll probably turn off the light after I address any questions, comments, concerns, but yeah, thank you.